Hi, we're going to do a tutorial on how to make Halloween cemetery columns. Uh, we'll use these in between each fence section that we're also making. Um, but we're just going to go over the columns today. As you can see, uh, we've got some cracks in there. Got it looking kind of weathered and old a little bit. So we're going to hop right in and show you how we made those and uh, what materials were used. All right, so to make these columns, uh, first we start off by building a base um, out of two by fours, and we cut those in 45 degree angles. Come over here and I'll show you a little better view of this. So we got our two by fours, and we have our 45 degree cut angles, and this is measured about 16 and a half to 17 inches from this point to this point. Now, once we have those cut, we, we add a little bit of wood glue on the two connecting points. And then we take um, um, wood screws and we connect those together. Now you can use nails, however you want to do it. Um, and then we take our two by twos and we're doing the same thing. We're cutting those in 45 degree angles, adding glue to the connecting points. And then on this, we're actually uh, first, we use a brad nail gun, and then we come back and uh, connect it together with wood screws. Now, you're going to do one base of the 2x4s, and then you're going to do two of these here, the 2x2s. Two you're going to have one that connects to the bottom base, and then you're going to have one that connects to the top here. So once you have all that constructed here, then you want to take your 2x2s, I'll show you this here. And these come in, I believe, uh, eight foot section. We get those at Home Depot or Lowe's. So then we cut these in 52 and a half inch sections. And that's gonna be uh, four pieces per column. So now on this, I like to add the glue. On the two sides, it's gonna connect to the base. So then we'll take this here and just press that in. And then um, you can nail that in. I like to put about five in each side there. So there's one and it feels nice and secure there. All right, now that we got our vertical two by twos connected to the bottom, we're gonna connect our top piece. And um, we're gonna add our glue. Now you're probably getting a little drip on this right here. So I like to kind of rub it in so it's not so thick. We'll go around and go ahead and do that to all sides. All right, so now we got our four two by twos on the inside of the frame. And I like to get one of those in. Punch that into place. All right, let's try from a different angle here. All right, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, this is just a Halloween prop. It's not kitchen cabinets, it's going in your cabinet. So just try to get that level as you can. So now that that's level, that's got our, um, our frame built. And now we're going to apply the underlayment that's going to cover the four sides. We have measure distance um, from here to here. 
And we did our markings here. So now we're gonna take our jigsaw and get to cutting. All right, now that we, now that we have our four pieces cut, uh, each of those, we're just going to place just like this. Sometimes you have to bend it a little bit. But once you nail it, or screw it, or whatever you're gonna do, and then go into place. I've noticed sometimes it doesn't warp out like that. Other times it does, it may just be, maybe this uh, was hammered down a little bit more to level out, but it all still works out well. So we'll get that there. So we get that in place. All right, now that we got our all of our sides covered up in all four corners, our four sides, I guess I should say, is the under limit. Now we're gonna apply our foam board here. You can pick this up at Home Depot Lowe's. Um, Home Depot has the pink color and Lowe's has the, uh, the blue. I don't know if I said this, but do not use the the foam board with the silver backing that is more like a styrofoam versus this is kind of like a foam and when you go to put your cracks and just different um distress you know techniques it doesn't work as well but you can use it but it just doesn't distress as well with the heat pin and we'll show you that later so we um we measure all four sides and then we'll do, well, actually, we measure two sides. First, the front. We'll measure this side here. And then we'll spin it around and measure the opposite side to that, not the two sides over here. And I'll show you why we're going to do that. Okay, now that, um, now that we have our two sides, um, like I said, I like to do the two opposite sides first. And then come back and do this side here. That way I can get the measurement just right to where everything is boxed in and squared in real nice. And that's what I've done with this piece here. Uh, so now that we have that final piece cut, we'll take our caulking gun. Watch we'll spread it around the edges here. And we're just using a uh, liquid nail, extra, oop, extra strength. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I would say stay close to the edges to get that part nice and um, secure to your, your base. showing to um, the edges here and that's fine because we got ways that we can fix that all right so now we got our four sides there I would definitely let that dry for maybe 24 hours maybe 12 hours before you start moving to the next step now that we've got our foam board um, attached we want to go around and distress the the foam and usually what i do is i start off with a saw with this here kind of rough up the edges and you can kind of find spots where there's imperfections and kind of build off of that or you can just kind of take your saw just kind of saw downward you know there's no right wrong way just kind of break some pieces off and it will look like broken concrete or you can kind of give it a chiseled look where it's just kind of straight 
it down the opposite direction like this. And as you can see, it gives it like a chiseled look. So just go around and just find some, some areas to, to saw. Just kind of wrap it up a little bit. You know, there's no wrong way to do it. As you can see on uh, one over here, you can see we've just kind of roughed up the edges. Of course, that's been painted. Just kind of break up the edges. Um, you could take chunks of, you know, pieces out. Let's see if we can find one with some chunks taken out. Uh, there's a little one right there. Oh, there's one. There's a big chunk. So just take your saw and rough it up a little bit. Okay, now that we have our pillars, our columns, um, distressed, as you can see, we just went around some of the edges there. Just kind of chip those up real good. Now I'm going to explain all this white stuff here in just a moment. Just kind of wrap them up. All right. So what I'm doing with this um, this white stuff, which is actually joint compound. Just pick that up at um, Lowe's. If you can see on some of the parts here, there is some of the, the crack where the two points come together. So what I did was I go through with the joint compound. Let's do this on video here. And I'm just gonna smooth that on there. And basically all I'm doing is I'm filling some of those cracks. I'm just kinda easing that on. And it just, fills in the, um, the gap there. So as you can see, I, I done went through most of that and fill that in. And then what I'll do next is, I'll take a sander, you can take a sanding block or a power sander, and just um, sand that down to get some of that white, the excess um, joint compound off. All right, our next step we're gonna do is create some cracks in the uh, pillars, the columns. As you can see all the cracks that we've incorporated into the columns. And to do so, we're just using this, um, uh, I'm not for sure what this is called. What is this called? A heat pen, I guess. It's a welding, little welding. Oh, it's a welding, a soldering. Soldering, yeah. A soldering solder. tool, okay. So it's used for soldering. Um, just plugs up. But anyhow, this works really great for creating the crack marks. And there's no right way or wrong way to do this. I will say that I've learned that the cracks seem to turn out a little bit better if you're not putting just straight kind of lines. You know, kind of keep it moving, kind of curvy, because I would think that would be how a crack would go. So let's just go ahead and do this. Like I said, there's really no wrong way to do this because, you know, cracks really don't, you know, have a certain pattern they stick to. All right. And then I kind of just come off of this one a little bit. And you can just kind of do it however you want to do it. All right, so there's one there. So, Kind of get the idea just go around and put as many cracks as you want to do we went through we added um just some various cracks all around you can put as much as you want so now what we're going to do is we're going to take some black spray paint and fill in those cracks so just some regular spray paint works fine Go through and just fill in those cracks. And also what you wanna fill in too is all down the sides, anywhere you distressed it. So just all through here. And I'll show you why we're doing that. So go through, fill in your cracks, 
fill in your corners where it's distressed, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, now, following up with our next step, we're using a dry lock masonry waterproof paint. Uh, and this, this product here kind of has a gritty feel. It's like a sand in it. Uh, so it leaves like a concrete, a concrete like surface and it is waterproof. So this um, gives your product um, a waterproof um, coating. So we'll just put a nice coat of this on there. All the way around. You may have to do a couple coats. We usually do two coats because we'll go around and put it on thin. You don't want to put it on too thick around those cracks because then you're going to spill them in with your paint. So usually what I like to do is, I like to uh, maybe some of the spots here that don't have any cracks, put the paint on heavy there. And then once the paint brush starts to dry up a little bit, I go over those cracks and um, it helps from, you know, fill those cracks up with too much paint. And the same thing with the edges. You know, don't overdo it with the paint on the edges. That's why we've done so much black because we want some of that black showing like you see here. And of course, um, we'll do uh, another step of the, the painting, but you definitely want to let some of that black show through. As you can see here, you know, it was a little heavy on the paint and it filled up, you know, you're going to get that a little bit. Just don't do it too heavy. Otherwise, you're going to really fill in a lot of your cracks and that's not what we want. All right, so I'm going to show you how we done the tops on the um, pillars here. I didn't make a video of uh, pre-painting, but all I added was, I believe it was a one inch piece of foam that I cut into a square and just glued that right on top. And then roughed up and distressed those edges some. I'm gonna do a overview of how we have everything connected here. Um, as you can see, I have the eight foot piece here, here, uh, for the most part, I have all eight foot sections, uh, with the exception of one piece, my very end piece right here. That one's about six foot, just because um, after measuring the distance I needed from that corner to the top where my driveway ends up there by the sidewalk, um, three eight foot sections was just too long. So I, I had to make uh, one piece down there um, that is six foot. But um, anyways, as you can see, uh, the way I have these connected, these little L brackets right there. And I just, look, I only have one screw in there. So however you want to do, but uh, I just drill a couple screws into the column pillar and then um, just another one right there. And I don't have one at the bottom it, and it holds it just fine. And I have, have them connected like that. You know, at this one, it looks like I do have um, some there and then some there. And that's where I connect them in between the pillars. Now, uh, my yard is not completely level. As you can see, it comes down as a slope. So you will have to, um, you know, level off some spots. And what I did at the beginning here, I, did, I do let the fence um, kind of go to a slope because when I was trying to level out, like the first pillar, um, what was happening was, if that was level and then that was level, about the time I get down here, I would've had to have that corner one propped up, you know, six, seven, eight, I don't know, 10 inches. Um, so I, I do let those just kind of go at an angle. I did not level out the pillars at the top. Um, these here up front, I did kind of level out those out a little bit. Um, just had to put, you know, a few pieces of uh, wood under the front of them. And I want to show you something too. I didn't really go over in the video, but here's my entry gate. Okay, and the way I've done that, um, pretty self-explanatory, if you look at it, I just have a few pieces that kind of kind of incline up, um, kind of the same principle with the two by, one by twos and the four inch PVC sliced up, but that's how we've done the entry gate there. Okay, and then, um, let's see, 
Let me go over here on the corner. That one I have not leveled out. I still have to uh, finish leveling that one out there with a little bit of wood. Um, also, what, I, what I'm doing too, to secure this to the ground, because the first year, last year, um, the pillars got caught in the wind and the entire fence came down. I mean, one came down, the other came down. It was a, it was a disaster. Um, it didn't, it didn't do a lot of damage. Um, but I, what I done was I took some holes I drilled. I didn't take some holes. I drilled some holes through the two by four. All right, let's walk over here and I'll show you a finished product. Cause this is not completely done yet. Uh, we're still assembling this. So I, I, I bought these stakes right here, these spikes, some kind of concrete spike I picked up at Lowe's, but they have these holes in them, okay? And I think that is probably in the ground 10 to 12 inches. So what I do is I take a nail and I put it through and then I hammer it down to where it is, it puts a lot of pressure onto that so it acts as a pin. And that secures it really nice. That is not going anywhere. So I will do that to like this one. Uh, I don't think I have one of that one. Um, I have one of this one. I'll do the corners. As you can see, I have my holes here. I haven't done yet. Uh, I have the holes. I just haven't put the, the spikes in. But um, that's one way to secure it to the ground because I will tell you the wind will take it. And as you can see, I added some brown kind of rust look to the fence the video does not do it justice but it looks pretty good but overall i think it turned out pretty well we're still adding some of the tombstones that we created here's like the jason and, uh, that is a homemade version and then that one up there is homemade that one's homemade with the corpse uh, that is a skeleton we used that my wife made out of monster mud. There's a couple others. Uh, and then we have some little store-bought ones. We just use kind of fill in some empty spots. And we have a lot of animatronics that um, are not waterproof, so we don't stick those out until um, the day of Halloween. And then we have like a couple crows here, and uh, we accent it with some skulls. Um, but that's it. All right. Thanks for watching.